Remember Diglett? Well, Pokemon Generation 9 introduced Wiglet, and people are calling it a quote-unquote convergent Pokemon. In this video, we'll look into what a convergent mod seems to mean before I show you some of my own takes on making new convergent mods. You can call me Nordist, and here's convergent evolution in terms of Pokemon. Converge means coming together. Convergent evolution is a real biological phenomenon where two species who aren't really related to each other somehow ended up sharing similar features, most likely due to filling similar roles in their environments. A common example is the dolphin and shark, who look similar, but they're actually genetically pretty far apart. But convergent evolution could also count in species that look nothing like each other, like birds and bats, because they figured out flight independently, not necessarily because they had a common ancestor that flew. I mean, there is no magic percentage as to what makes two species too related to be considered convergent. It's mostly the idea of having similar features despite coming from different hereditary backgrounds, because having similar features under an immediate family tree isn't as surprising. With that said, I think we've already seen quite a few convergent mods, at least in the biological sense. See, in Generation 5, there were a lot of mods that can be correlated to Generation 1 mods. Between these pairings, one may argue that maybe there was a common ancestor that already had the common features between the two, and some migrated to Kanto or Unova, but here's one pair that I'm pretty sure is biologically convergent. Generation 1 had an Electrode, a Pokeball Mimic, and in Generation 5, they had Amoongus. Both lines have the trait of looking like Pokeballs, and it achieves similar goals for both of them which is to prank an unsuspecting trainer. One is a fungus, and the other is a... plant? Either way, completely different kingdoms, and very unlikely that they had the same ancestor that passed the Pokeball pattern down to both of them. No, it's more likely that they developed these patterns on their own, which means it's convergent evolution. But convergent evolution was probably in every other generation as well. These Pika clones, per se, is like a niche in every dex where there's at least one mon that looks like Pikachu. But who's to say that they all look like that because they came from the same Pikachu-like ancestor? For example, in our world, rabbits are pretty genetically removed from rodents, so if the same rules apply to the Pokemon world, that's convergent evolution. But our world's convergent evolution isn't exactly the same as these so-called convergent Pokemons. So, let's talk about Wiglet. Wiglet here is an eel who also digs around like the mole Pokemon Diglett. In the Pokemon world, they who knows what the heck Diglett is doing? They might as well be both be digging with their faces in universe. It's probably close enough to be called convergent evolution. But design-wise, I mean, Wiglet didn't need to have a big nose, did it? No, it needed it because Game Freak wanted to reference an older mon. Call it pandering or whatever, it ends up being effective anyways, not only in bringing older fans in, but is also effective in connecting the newest generation to the rest of the franchise. So what goes in making a convergent mod as opposed to a regional variant? Well, most regional variants are more like divergent evolution in our world, where an old species splits off to change into new species. You take a pre-existing mon and add a different idea. You change it up. But when you're designing convergent mons, it's the other way around. You take a different idea and make it look like a pre-existing mon, most likely by borrowing the features of the old mon. So with this in mind, I made three convergent mons that I'll be showing you in this video. 
Without further ado, let's look at some fake mon. So let's start off with Sticky Palm. It's a reference to A Palm. And A Palm is all about those monkeys who could hang from trees with their tails. Thus, they got a whole hand on their tail. Those tails are called prehensile tails. But Sticky Palm here has a gooey hand, like those old sticky hand toys that were made out of rubber. Sticky Palm is supposed to be a gecko because both monkeys and some species of geckos have prehensile tails. Yeah, nothing much else to this one. It's sticky. Yeah. This next one was suggested by Pine Size Kiwi in my Twitch chat, where they likened the frilled lizard Heliolisk to the superb bird of paradise. The bird of paradise is a family of birds known for their wonderful colors and all sorts of funny feathers. But the superb and vocal cop superb birds are known for puffing out their feathers in a display to attract a mate. Heliolisk is a generation 6 frilled lizard mod which puffs out the skin flaps around their neck. Honestly, the frilled lizard does that to intimidate their opponents. But in this case, both the bird and this lizard fluff something around their neck to make themselves look bigger. In this design, I went for a lunar theme, just as an additional nod to being the opposite of Heliolisk. Also, a basilisk is sometimes likened to a cockatrice, so that's my excuse for not changing that part of the name. Termites are genetically very different from bees, but they both have something called eusociality, where there is a colony built of many individuals with only a certain section reproducing. In other words, they both have queens, but instead of flying around like the bees, termites usually make mounds on the ground. So here's Combite, which is a reference to Combi. The heads were a little more rectangular looking, at least some species are. That's why I made it square, and yeah, it lives in a little mound. Alright, I actually have one more design to show you guys, which is the evolution of Comite. Here's Termite Queen, a little tiny queen on top of a big mound. Termite queens have uniquely large abdomens compared to queens of other bugs, so I made the body much smaller than the mound. So yeah, there you have it. Convergent evolution, something that happens in our world and now recognized in Pokemon's world. All sorts of species and even cultures that are far apart in this world can surprisingly come together without even knowing about each other. Personally, I think regional variants were still the best way to reintroduce old mons, but what are your thoughts on convergent mons? Leave a comment. I do read every one of them. Currently, I have my own STEM-based region going on this channel, so if that interests you, or if you like these kind of videos, consider subscribing! Thank you for watching till the end, and I'll see you next time.